okay very good morning students this is uh, mohammad afzal from csc department uh, in this semester i am going to handle network security and cryptography uh, for 7th uh, sem it okay uh, so quickly the subject code for this uh, subject is uh, pc704 uh, it okay so this is the code subject code given by the university okay as uh, you might be known uh, this subject is uh, having three credits if you successfully complete this subject you will get uh, three credits from uh, from the university and uh, already i have given the subject code for you people uh, which is i said uh, pc704 it so whenever we start uh, studying a new subject uh, we have to know i mean whenever we we do a regular task in our uh, daily routine uh, we must be aware of uh, what output we will get when we successfully accomplish that task so similar to this uh, courses okay when we when we do a certain course in our academics definitely after completion of that particular course we will get some kind of uh, outcomes some kind of output from that course so here we call that thing as uh, course outcomes okay so quickly we have to know what code course outcomes will get on successful completion of this course okay we call them as course outcomes uh, so if you read that uh, first line after completing this course the students will be able to get uh, the following things okay uh, the first point uh, they will understand this course and uh, they will understand what is information what is data and when you uh, transmit the information uh, over the channel because uh, whenever we do a kind of transmission uh, we have to know these things so we'll be having uh, uh, the source we call it as uh, source one source ent entity we are going to have uh, these things when we do the transmission okay and uh, we are going to have the uh, destination okay this is your uh, uh, destination and if you do the transmission from source to destination yeah if we need a particular channel whether it is wired or wireless we need a channel in order to do the transmission so uh, over the channel we'll do the transmission so channel is helpful in order to provide the transmission so with the help of channel what we do we do the transmission so transmission so from source to destination we are sending the yeah what we do what we generally send we call it as either data or we call it as if it is very specific we call it as yeah information okay these things uh, either data or information what we do we transmit from source to destination we transmit from source to destination with the help of a channel so we also in our computer terminology or in our it sector we call this channel as network isn't it we call it as network because over the network only we transmit the data network is nothing but your internet isn't it so if you transmit the data from source to dest destination definitely they are going to be uh, different kinds of threats we are going to have threats in the form of hackers threats in the form of viruses worms all those things we call them as threats okay different threats where we are going to have these threats in the sense in transmission channel okay that thing we will see in detail uh, so after completion of the course you will understand what kind of threats we have when we transmit the data from source to destination so will be aware of the threats so this particular thing you will understand okay and uh, to avoid these threats what we have to do we have to follow a security approach a security mechanism so after completion of this particular course this ne network security you will be able to design a suitable network model 
through which you can transmit the information or data without any threats so what appropriate uh, mechanism we have to use in order to uh, protect our data or protect our network that you will understand when you successfully complete this course this thing you will understand okay so and as i said uh, not only uh, knowing the threads not only uh, knowing the mechanism but also you will be able to design the solution you will be able to design that mechanism using different applications okay so you will be able to design a particular security model a particular security solution so that you can transmit the data over the network without any threats so that security solutions will be able to design okay uh, and uh, also will be able to know the security issues what kind of security issues will get when we do the transmission when we perform the transmission over the vulnerable network our network we call it as very vulnerable it is completely vulnerable we don't have any if you don't have any mechanisms to uh, what we call secure your network definitely it will become vulnerable what do you mean by vulnerable in the sense vulnerable means prone to threats if you don't follow a mechanism if you don't uh, apply a perfect security solution to your network ultimately what will happen it will become vulnerable prone to threats prone to threats so that concept also you will understand how the security issues will make your network prone to threats that you will understand so security issues is an important point over here okay so definitely we'll understand the security issues we'll apply the security issues in order to protect our communication okay so various types of net set network security threats uh, as well as uh, cryptographic algorithms also we will understand okay network security various types of uh, network security security threats as well as cryptographic algorithms what do you mean by cryptography what sort of cryptographic algorithms we use in order to protect our data all those things we will see the first point we covered second we discussed the first point we said we will understand the threats the security threats to our network and the second point we said what appropriate mechanism we have to uh, adopt in order to protect our network and the third one we said will design a security solu solution so that our uh, network will become vulnerable free it will become threat free and we said uh, different network if, if there are uh, different uh, network security threats in the network we cannot transmit the data and it will become uh, yeah it will become completely vulnerable to the uh, threats and uh, we said yeah we will understand the security issues the security threats as well as the different cryptographic algorithms so these are the course outcomes that you will gain that you will have in hand once you successfully complete this subject network security okay uh, so uh, coming to the syllabus already i told you you'll be gaining three credits if you successfully complete this uh, um, network security subject as part of your seventh sem okay the seventh sem academia okay so here if you see the first unit uh, and uh, the tests uh, what kind of uh, assessments will do uh, that you already know basically we do two types of assessment one is internal assessment and one is external assessment external assessment will be done by the university and we are re responsible for uh, internal assistance uh, internal assessment and uh, for that we are awarding 30 marks and your university will give 70 marks for external assessment that you are already quite familiar so if you come to this first unit here we'll study uh, the security concepts okay different uh, uh, terminal basically the security concepts are nothing but the terminology related to this uh, uh, network security so we'll understand uh, the terminal all the terms what we are going to use uh, throughout this semester those terms we will discuss over here 
so the basic terminology like uh, what is plain text what is ciphertext and what is uh, um, source what is destination or what is an attack uh, what is a threat uh, these kind of things we will understand okay these kind of things we will understand in your uh, security concepts that we will see over here okay so introduction we'll see a simple model for your uh, um, ne sorry network security and uh, the need for security why we need uh, uh, security in our uh, transmission in transmission and uh, different uh, security approaches we will see and the principles for this security and types of security attacks so, uh, okay we have uh, different types of security attacks mostly we uh, we deal with uh, uh, active and uh, passive attacks so what are active attacks and what are passive attacks that we will see over here so active attacks and passive attacks that we will discuss in detail what is active attack when we call it as active attack and what is passive attack when we call it as passive attack those things we will see in detail okay and different security mechanisms we will see okay what uh, approaches already uh, because this uh, as far as the security is concerned it is uh, not a latest issue uh, we have uh, throughout our history we have this uh, uh, security thing okay um, i mean uh, before the invent of these uh, computers before the invent of this uh, it infrastructure how the people followed the security as far as the message is concerned how they um, how they transmit transmitted the message uh, securely okay when there is no concept of uh, it infrastructure that we will see and in terms of it infrastructure um, a basic model for network security that we will see in your first unit itself and uh, coming to this cryptography what is cryptography we will understand and why it is uh, very important as far as the security is concerned that we will see and um, yeah here as I said, what is plain text, what is uh, cipher text, what is uh, uh, and how we are going to perform this uh, uh, cryptography. Basically, cryptography is a combination of uh, two different approaches. Okay, cryptography is uh, basically it will have uh, one is uh, encryption. Okay, already you might be quite familiar with these terms. Uh, once again, we will discuss in detail. So, decryption what is encryption what is decryption we will understand and how these encryption and decryption are helpful in order to perform this cryptography that also we will see in detail okay so in order to perform this encryption we follow different uh, techniques or we follow different approaches one such approach is uh, substitution substitution means simply uh, whatever plain text we have in that plain text will replace the content will replace and will put new content over there suppose if you have uh, hello if you want to transmit the message hello so instead of h e l l o what we do means we'll take uh, we follow our own alphabet in order to perform these uh, substitution mechanism so we will substitute h with uh, let us say a okay a different alphabet let us say a and for e we'll use uh, a different alphabet let us say b for l we'll use a different okay then for o we'll use a different uh, alphabet so in place of l we'll put uh, let us say z okay again z in place of o let us say we are keeping p so like this our entire plain text after substitution will become completely understandable okay a third party if he gets this message if he gets this a b z z p he will not get anything from this message but whereas if you transmit the message as it is without any substitution mechanism if you transmit the message as it is yeah if a third party will get that message ultimately he will get what is there in that message what you are doing you are greeting your partner isn't it by saying hello you are greeting your partner so the third party will understand that you are greeting your partner but if the third party will get this one he will get confused what the transmitter is sending he will get confused so in that way this uh, substitution techniques are helpful transposition techniques what are transposition techniques that also we will see so what is encryption what is decryption will will go into detail and uh, there are two types of basically two types of uh, uh, cryptography techniques we have one is uh, symmetric key cryptography and uh, asymmetric key cryptography 
we will see in detail what is symmetric key cryptography and what is asymmetric key cryptography that we will see whenever we are doing the key selection how we have to select the key what methods we have to follow what models we have to follow in order to do the key selection that we will see over here key range and key size that we will see over here and what type of possible attacks can occur to our uh, transmission that we will see over here so with this we will conclude our first unit and we'll go to the second unit second unit it is uh, completely your algorithms we have in your second unit so like uh, symmetric key encryption algorithms and asymmetric key encryption algorithms so basically after performing the encryption we will get this ciphertext so that i will explain so let us say you have the plain text so whatever message you want to transmit that message we call it as plain text let us see uh, i want to transmit a message okay i will come tomorrow morning okay what i want to do i want to transmit this simple message i will come tomorrow morning i will come tomorrow morning so this is my plain text so from here to here it will become my plain text so if i transmit this plain text as it is over the vulnerable network over the internet internet is our vulnerable network it is completely public network anybody can gain the internet access and anybody can uh, steal your data anybody can hack your data from the internet that we already know isn't it that we already know so if we transmit the plain text as it is without doing anything without doing anything then what will happen it is prone to threats it is prone to threats so what we have to do we have to apply a suitable encryption mechanism to this uh, plain text what we have to do we have to apply the encryption we have to apply the encryption here i am writing encryption so if you apply the encryption then what you will get you will get the ciphertext after applying the plain text with encryption we will get the cipher text so cipher text cipher text is something scrambled text just now i have shown one simple example with the help of uh, um, substitution technique with the help of substitution technique what we are doing we are scrambling the text so cipher text is something scrambled text scrambled text scrambled text in the sense if the third party will gain that scrambled text he will not understand anything so whatever plain text i am transmitting from here to uh, de destination what i have to do before transmitting that plain text i have to perform encryption and i have to get the scrambled text i have to get the cipher text so for this plain text let us assume i am getting the scrambled text something like this a okay uh, do okay do uh, for come I'm, I'm getting something like this d e r y okay then tomorrow it will be coming like this okay a r p o something like this okay p o y y z then morning it is convert it is uh, converted something like this in place of morning we are getting d r p y z t something like this we are getting so this is your scrambled text if a third party even if a third party is gaining this scrambled text and reading this scrambled text he will not get anything from that text because it is completely in unreadable form it is ununderstandable form so that problem we have uh, i mean that kind of advantage we have whenever we perform the encryption whenever we perform the encryption so that encryption mechanism basically after performing the encryption what we are getting we are getting the cipher isn't it we are getting the cipher so that is the reason why what we are calling instead of calling them as encryption algorithm we are calling them as ciphers we are calling them as ciphers so symmetric key ciphers what is symmetric key ciphers and what are asymmetric key ciphers we will discuss so here these are all so 
DES, AES, Blowfish. Okay, this DES. Then we have AES. Then we have Blowfish. Then we have RC5. Then IDEA. Okay, all these are symmetric key cipher algorithms. Okay, symmetric RC4 also. RC5 and RC4. All these are symmetric key ciphers. Okay, we will discuss examples for symmetric key ciphers. They have already developed. All these algorithms are already developed and readily available in the market. Simply will not do anything. We'll simply analyze how they have implemented these algorithms. We'll, uh, we'll have a study on these type of algorithms. Then we have the asymmetric key ciphers. Some asymmetric key ciphers examples. Yeah, this RSA algorithm is an asymmetric key cipher. Diffie-Hellman key algorithm is an asymmetric key cipher. We also call this asymmetric key cipher as public key. Public key cipher. Public key ciphers. So basically, whenever you perform the encryption or decryption, we need a key. So whenever you are performing the encryption or decryption, we need a key. That key you can... Uh, we, we are having two possibilities for our keys. One is public key and the other one is private key. Okay. Public key and private key. Private key. So, we will discuss in detail what is public key, what is private key and uh, when we call a key as public key and when we call a key as private key. If it is open to the world, we call it as public key. If it is uh, uh, hidden if it is not open then we call it as private key that we will see in detail okay so then we have in your third unit uh, we'll discuss more about hash functions what is a hash function and how it is helpful in order to perform this uh, message authentication all those things we will see in your third unit okay message authentication codes that we will see like hamac cmac we have different uh, types of uh, authentication codes like your digital signatures all these things we will see in your third unit then uh, yes uh, we, we we have already seen this one key management and distribution whenever you are performing the key distribution what kind of principles what kind of uh, uh, what we call um, authenticity we need to gain that we will see over here Okay, both in case of symmetric key and in case of asymmetric key, when you perform the uh, key distribution uh, and uh, key management, all those things we will see in your third unit. Then we have your fourth unit, transport level security. This is uh, something like in your uh, iOS model, uh, iOS, iOS OSI model, OSI model, not iOS, OSI model, we have seen uh, different uh, levels, isn't it? different layers we have seen like your physical data link layer network layer transport layer session layer application layer or like likewise we have seen different layers so at transport layer because that transport layer only actual communication takes place between the source and the destination if you go to your reference model OSI reference model there you will understand that the actual i mean communication is happening at transport layer only so at that level at that layer what kind of security we need that we will see in detail in your fourth unit as well as if you are performing a wireless transmission okay if you are performing a wireless transmission how you are securing that one that we will see in your uh, fourth unit okay wireless network security we will see in your fourth unit and coming to your last unit that is uh, fifth unit and email security and msm uh, sorry mime ip security all those things pgp this is pretty good security or pretty good privacy all those things we will see in your fifth unit okay in your fifth unit we will we are going to uh, have a brief uh, introduction of your uh, ip packets when you are transmitting the data from source to destination basically how we transmit we convert the data into uh, IP packets. If you are quite familiar with your uh, network, uh, computer networks, there you might have understood that whatever transmission we do, we do in terms of IP packets. Okay. And over here, we will see the complete structure of your IP packet. Okay. What kind of flags, what kind of uh, um, what are extra content we are going to maintain in order to transmit the data over the internet. 
so simply what we are going to do means we are going to encapsulate a lot of things a lot of uh, security related information in your ip packet in your ip packet along with your data it is also going to have uh, different uh, network related information okay network information we are going to encapsulate where we are going to encapsulate this network related information in your ip packet information network related information plus the actual data this data is nothing but your actual data it can be your cipher text or your plain text if you're not performing any encryption then we are going to transmit the uh, plain text if you are performing the encryption then we will get the cipher text that if you consider this entire thing if you consider it as uh, data then we associate that data with your network information to get to get what to get the ip packet so basically uh, your ip packet is a combination of all these things is the combination of all these information all this information so that we will see in your fifth unit and suggested reading if you go what kind of uh, books we have to follow that we have only two books this uh, william stanley's uh, cryptography and network security is a standard book okay this is a standard book either you are studying information security or you are studying network security this particular thing this particular textbook principles and practices by william stanley's pearson education sixth edition this is a standard book you can easily get this book from your library you can refer this te textbook for your syllabus uh, okay and uh, this is uh, a second atul kahate it is uh, a second textbook it is a reference book it is a mcgraw edition third edition you can even get this book from uh, library okay we have these two books in your library you can refer any of these two okay actually uh, like your unit 1 2 3 they have kept inside this uh, cryptography and network security so uh, this one unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 you can get from this william stalling's textbook in order to get the information related to unit 4 and unit 5 you have to refer this uh, cryptography and network security uh, by atul kahate okay so uh, quickly in our tomorrow's class in our next class definitely we are going to start your first unit and we will see the basic terminology related to your uh, first unit okay till that time hope you all are doing good staying safe at home uh, inshallah we'll discuss the rest of the things in our next class thank you students